Hey, here she is. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Derek, full in full support. I was like, thank you for the repost. Totally appreciate it. I think I saw Katie jump on too. Katie, you there? <laughs> I think I saw you. <laughs> yeah. So exciting. So this is our first live. We're like so nervous. Um, I've never had, I've never used it before. So we're like, we're nervous. We don't know what to do. Hi, Katie. I don't know you, but nice. Hey, hey <laughs> Maybe we Love should do this all the time. Like, hey, I know, right? Know. What? This is great. We're just having a party. Um, so we don't know how many folks are going to pop in. We didn't expect too many people. We just really wanted to hop on and talk about some of the things that we've been dealing with. Um, um, trying to initiate this book drive and just some of the conversations that we've been having uh, really around a lot of people feeling uncomfortable um, about some of the titles that we want to donate to um, our diverse communities, you know, um, children seeing themselves reflected in the literature that they read. So we're going to give everybody about five minutes to hop on. We know that some folks, you know, our friends across the country want to join. So we'll give them a couple minutes. My lighting is, is off. Am I like shadowy? Um, looks like a fog a little bit. But... Doesn't it? It's okay. Don't, you know, we're going to get real personal. Don't mind me, everybody. Here we go. <laughs> also, it's the middle of the day, but feel free to get a drink if you want. You know, oh, okay. these. I finished mine already, but I'm going to get another one. <laughs> it's right. a party, guys. It it's really always is. a party. I, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> Still kind of foggy. Uh, yeah. You're all right. Let me turn on this light. It's giving like a halo effect, so so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, it is this lighting. Okay. Um, I want to. Ooh, no, 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 no. What? You're good. Dare say you're good. Huh? Dare say you're good. Ah, you know, we're going to just roll with it. It's so dark, I feel like. My you look fine. So you're fine. You look fine. I do. We, we can see you. It's not like it's hard to see your face or anything. All right, cool. And I can drink good. All right. Um, I'm going to go grab another drink. Audio is good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Derek. We need all the help we can get. <laughs> We're going to put it's... you on payroll. Okay, minim <laughs> minimum wage, okay? <laughs> also, for those of you, we are partnering with Not Zero Yet, so check out um, on one of our posts to see yeah, how well, we can we um, Yes, tell them. Okay, so we have a giveaway $25 gift card, so there's some ways that you can enter. Um, so you have to go to our page, uh, like our page, like Not Zero Yet's page, share you get an extra entry um if you share our post in your story and tag us and um not zero yet is sponsoring that oh harry hey <laughs> uh so make sure you do our, our giveaways uh, not zero yet has some awesome awesome products humans before dollars i love the slogan so we're all about that so make sure you check them out um obviously for the giveaway but also for just the good work that he's doing over there um, so super happy that we were able to partner with him and do some collaboration. So we're really excited about that. So happy yeah. Cassie! Hey! <laughs> Thank awesome. you, Derek. Um, I don't know if live goes... Oh, okay. I will be right back. Um, Ash, Dr. Ashley, uh, she's going to come in here. I don't know if she's joining us today, Dr. Ashley Williams, um, but it was an episode about equity um, in our early childhood education. And so Miracle House was inspired to actually start a book drive where we're trying to collect um, books with diverse titles, characters, families, where there's, we can really see representation um, for all of our youth and all of our families out there um, in literature that they're reading. And so the hope is that we can collect maybe a thousand books across the country from all these different sites and be able to, um, you know, have some more exposure with diverse literature 
being what a cultural vehicle it was, we think, um, you know, that it's super important to be able to get these books in the hands of kiddos when they're young and start having some of these conversations um, earlier rather than later so that maybe we can try to prevent this crazy that's happening out there in the world right now. So that's what our hope is. Um, and it's been interesting. So, you know, we've had some feedback related to the book drive, some good feedback. Obviously, we've get, we're getting a lot of donations in. Um, people have been really positive sharing it. Hey, Gen C, Desiree, Ash, Dr. Ashley, I just was talking about you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Miranda, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about kind of, I talked, you know, some of what we're doing with the book drive, but if you want to. Give yeah, a little so did you mention as I was trying to like adjust lighting and seating and all that, um, did you talk about kind of our goal, a thousand books across the country throughout? Okay. Um, so I'll just share the books. Some yeah. The books? Yeah. So um, some of the books that we um, have on our book list, uh, we have, let's see. So we have A for Activist, right? A great one for kids to see. We have Anti-Racist Baby. Love this book. Um, right. We have, <laughs> right? We have No, My First Book of Protest. Um, we've got a lot of things. So these are just some that have, we have a list of 25 different books. And so they really cover a lot of different things, um, just like diverse communities. So um you know latin latinx communities um, i think there's a book about like um, a girl wearing her hijab there are just just differences right just things that maybe some kids aren't exposed to every day um kindness is my superpower one of my favorites really love makes a family um i think that that's super important um we got some interesting feedback on this one <laughs> um hair love right something i was lucky enough lucky enough to grow up with hair love um, reminds me of a recent conversation with Noelle. Um, so yeah, so just a bunch of different titles, right? Um, and Noelle, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we've been hearing? Yeah, so I think some of, again, you know, like like I said, we've also gotten great feedback, right? <laughs> people, have, people that have donated, we've been able to, um, across the country in various drop-off locations, um, get um, a lot of book donations. So that's awesome. Um, but then on the flip side of that, there's always going to be the other piece of it. So we've had people um, complain, <clears throat> <laughs> essentially, um, about their children being too young to be exposed to these kind of ideas, being too young to have this conver these conversations, parents trying to shelter their kids actually from the topics and not really wanting to um, expose them to it, that when they get older, that will be the time for them to kind of deal with it and figure it out. But right now when they're young, they shouldn't, you know, have to deal or talk about these things. Um, there's been concern of, well, what if bad things are being said in these books? What if they make, what if they make um, white people seem bad in the books? What if we're teaching children that the white people are actually bad? And, you know, just some of these fears, ultimately, if you listen to try to get past the words, right, and listen to, like, what people are kind of communicating, just a lot of white fear is what, to me, what it seems like from the experiences that feedback that I've gotten and then Miranda hearing stories from you of feedback that you've gotten sort of is the underlying tone, right, of uh, they've all been white people, so... I mean, we just got to talk about it. Yeah. Um, they've all been white people that have had the concerns. And so Miranda and I thought it was important to come on and, and talk about that because I can't say I was super surprised. Like that's something that we kind of are up against. I mean, working in the schools, for me, it's something that teachers are up against. Um, it's something that we're con we deal with parent complaints about literature or administration not wanting to talk about things like this and sort of trying to control the narrative, right? That's something that we've talked about on previous episodes. So I think it's good that we're here today. You know, I, I'd love to hear from people if they've had these experiences or if they've had things like this happen. Um, happy that the Unpack Project and all the people that are participating in this book drive find it important to get the diverse literature out there because it's what we're trying to do, right? Like change, change this narrative, have kids and families um, see themselves and see others. Like you said, Miranda, that they're not always maybe experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, right, like we do our podcast, which is obviously geared towards adults, you know, but mm -hmm. Noelle and I have worked with children in, in various capacities for many 10, 10 plus years, you know, probably 15 plus years at this point. 
I'm 35, 20 plus years at this point. Um, you know, for me, whether it was after school programming, summer camps, you know, uh, early literacy programs, you know, in elementary schools, things like that. Um, and for me, I, I really hold true to, um, we can make change when it comes to our youth, you know? I wanna hear things like, I wanna shelter my children from um, politics mm -hmm. um, for as long as they can and so they're able to make their own choice. Those types of things worry me, right? And, and really as a black person, you know, mixed race, th that's a code word, right? Um, because, you know, for you, this may be politics, but for me, this is my life. And, mm -hmm. and that's very different. And, you know, in working with children or giving back to the community, we want to make sure that children are reflected in the literature that they read. So when I hear things like, can't we just show children the classics like we're used to reading? That's another mm -hmm. code word, right? Because the classics, kind of like our history books, don't always represent everybody that are in these spaces that we hold um, true. And, and you know, this is, you know, kind of maybe racial at this moment, but we've even heard things like, should we be teaching children um, that being gay is okay? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of my kids that I've come into contact with have same-sex parents, right? And that's something that we talk about. A lot of people that I work with, and granted, you know, I'm speaking about work, but just kind of in general, what I'm thinking is, if, if I have people that work with me and, and they come in, I'm asking about them their weekend and they, it's a woman I'm speaking to and she says, oh, this weekend I went to wherever with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. That's a completely safe and transparent conversation that you can have in front of kids and we welcome you into this space, right? And you should be able to bring your whole self to this space. So, you know, I wish that um, more people were open to that. You know, something else I read, these titles, right? So we have A for activist. Mm -hmm. um, anti-racist baby and know my first book of protests so things like should we be teaching children how to say no yes yes we should yep. <laughs> yes we should always a good um, idea right aside from protest you know um if a child feels unsafe if a child feels something in their gut if they just think that something is wrong they should be an upstander and be able to say this isn't okay right and those you know here at the unpack project those are the things that we want to instill in people of any age right um but i so, think what starts mm -hmm. to happen with that though it's like that idea of white comfort, right? Like mm -hmm. we can talk about that until it becomes about race. Like, well, we can have conversations of saying no and like we put this blanket over it of like kindness, which I'm not saying like we should be talking about kindness and diversity, how to, how to treat others kindly, right? But when it becomes explicitly about race, like, you know, we've had activism and people protesting and that's been a part of our history. Like that's, that's been around for civil rights, right? Like all these other issues. And we have to think of who's controlling them. We think of whitewashing history and mm -hmm. some people are, are putting these requests out there to maybe remove these books or because they're trying to control those things. Mm -hmm. like, you know, trying to control the narrative of what their children are being exposed to. And maybe you're not ready to have this conversation with your children for your own personal issues, but as a society, like we're moving here, <laughs> we're, we're yeah. going in this direction. And like you said, so that it's creating these safe spaces because what's outside of that white discomfort, there's a whole world of other people out there, people of color, people with diverse families, same sex families, um, you know, different ethnicities. Like you said, the girl with the, um, the book where the girl wear her hijab, all these different groups of people that have been discriminated against or oppressed, or we've never talked about it. If we don't teach it, then the kids don't know. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I think that was part of what the, the purpose of the book drive was, um, you know, in general, was just trying to kind of get this out there because if we had teachers check their libraries or we looked at home libraries or mm -hmm. um, we kind of had people, you know, do an intake of what kind of books they have, like, do we even, you know, as, as a white person, most likely, and we talked about this in previous episodes, like it's going to be or your inclination to like have books with white people in them, most mm -hmm. likely, right? Or have books that reflect your family that looks like you. So if we're not being purposeful or conscious about these decisions of trying to expose our children to other things so that they're able to be inclusive and be accepting, and that conversation doesn't start happening, then we have like what's happening in the world right now I feel like you know people just not being able to to accept one another yeah yeah so, yeah well it's about you know, 
people see the titles and their mind goes somewhere. Like Miranda, you and I talked, a lot of the people that gave us feedback hadn't even read the books. They just had an opinion about the title. <laughs> yeah. When, when I asked the, the people that came to me and gave feedback, I was like, well, did you read the book? No. I just think there could be something bad in there. Well, read it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. First step, first, number yeah. one. Yeah. Read what's inside. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that, that to me was just really mind blowing. Yeah. So I think um, I'll take a moment. So for those of you that have joined, I mean, obviously there's some folks in here that are doing the book drive with us. Um, but for those of you that are unaware, you know, definitely make sure you check out our bio. The link is in our bio to um, our Amazon link for all the 25 diverse titles that we're looking to donate to books within the Tampa Bay area. So please do check that out. I mean, they're minimally priced, like five to fifteen dollars, um, and they'll just get shipped directly to my place. So please, please um, help us in this fight for justice. Um, and the other thing is, it really reminds me, you know, not not taking the moment to look in between the covers is the exact same experience we have of not taking the time to get to know somebody mm -hmm. and their experience and who they are, right? And who they are under their skin. Um, and it's it really just reigns true to the same issues that we're dealing with in society right now is that right. we're afraid of differences. And it's this fear, it's this fear of the unknown. But if you just peel back a couple of layers, you really will find, I know you say this all the time, Noel that there are so many more similarities between people than there are differences, um, mm -hmm. typically in the communities that you are in, right? Regardless of, of your race, you know? Um, and so- even, even when you cross, mm -hmm. you'll find there's, you probably have more income mm -hmm. than yeah. what's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. yeah. So I know folks have been commenting. Um, if you guys have, if you want to share anything, if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer or just anything to talk about, um, also, if this reminds you of any episodes that we've, if you've been listening, if any of our previous episodes, I know that we've wrapped up season one already. Um, so please do that. We'd like to talk about that. This is supposed to be an open forum, you know, question to answer. We didn't know how many questions we'd get. So we just wanted some things um, on the table for us to talk about. Um, I can read you know, some of these. Do you want me to read some of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Um, so Harry, he said, you can never please everyone. So don't let that stop you. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. cheers to that. Yes. <laughs> um, and he was saying, you can see with what happened Wednesday, you know, people can't appreciate what we're doing. Um, Desiree, these are conversations that we have to have with young kids of color so that we would rather, um, that we would rather not have to have. So for others to say they don't want to have to expose their kids is entitlement in itself. Yeah, and I think like that came up, Desiree, that came up a lot um, between Miranda and I when we were just like, that's even just white privilege to be able to say that. Yeah. Like to be able to like come in here, you know, say like, well, I'm uncomfortable with these titles or I don't think my child should be exposed to that when our kids outside of these books are living their lives. Like they're in these societies, right? This is, there are, there are racial things constantly happening. There are diverse families who aren't accepted. Um, and so this, this is a reality for people. So to not use literature to have these conversations is a disservice. And it is, I mean, I was like, the number one form of entitlement to even feel like you can have that choice of excluding this literature and pretending like it doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, and it's also an insult to the ability, the capabilities of children, right? Mm -hmm. They are diverse creatures capable of, of thought and opinions. And, and these books aren't necessarily, you know, shoving things down your throat, right? They're, you know, you see images and what I always try to explain to folks is, when children are ready, they'll ask questions, right? Because, you know, as they grow, they're able to formulate um, more like complete and comprehensive thoughts. So mm -hmm. at two, they may not ask the same questions that they would at four, right? But it's really all what they notice in, in the images that they're reading. And so I think a lot of folks are afraid that if they open a book, they're going to have to have this conversation. And I'm like, well, first of all, you're however old, however many years older than your child. <laughs> so that in and of itself should be comfortable. Right for the fact that you can most likely have this conversation, you know, um, at least to their level, uh, but also that they're not gonna ask these hard complex questions that adults ask, you know? They're usually fairly simple. Maybe they notice that, oh, is that, are those two guys? Are those two boys? Yeah, they are, and they're a happy family. That's, sim you know, what else do you see, right? Very simple. Um, if so you're by get in the way of that conversation. Exactly, yeah. And so that's a lot of what we've, that's the roadblock we've got, right? People thinking we're indoctrinating kids by putting these books out in the book drive or, um, you know, really like 
what we have here, if you don't speak to your children, you let someone else create the narrative. It reminds me of what I sent you, Miranda, the other day, where it was like, um, don't let people try to trick you into creating their future. Yep. Like people, yeah. people trying to, um, again, from that white discomfort and um, our history that we've talked about, how these things have, you know, kind of this white power narrative that's been in place for a long time. And like society is changing. Like people are feeling like they're losing a grasp on that. And we're seeing this lash back. But one of the, I forget where it was. I saw the white lash. <laughs> I forget um, where I saw that on, on one of the, the pages I was reading. But this term of like white lash, right? Like when we see people starting to make progress, people of color starting to make progress, these like really strong reactions. I mean, yeah. to the extent of how extreme it happened the other day. Mm -hmm. That's actually like the argument can be made like this is what happens when we don't have these conversations, right? And like this needs to be called put on the table, like we need to have these conversations of because kids are gonna ask. Like kids are out there, they're seeing all these things that are happening. Mm -hmm. Um and it's, so it's a matter of exposure, like what you were saying, you know, like presenting it, kids are gonna have different questions at different ages. So it's a matter of exposing them. Um but then at the same time, you know, as they get older, they're going to be able to remember when they were exposed to it and think about it differently because mm -hmm. they, it's sort of like that mindset that we're trying to create. So, um, and the, oh, um, Ashley pinned the book drive. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> we're getting there. This is our first live. <laughs> um, yeah, so no. what, else? what else is in the comment section? Um, and we're not only raising children, we are raising adults who contribute to society and we start shaping that early. Yes, at Dr. Ashley, Dr. Williams, brain architecture, as she says. <laughs> and cradle to prison pipeline. Those are the two yes. things that we learned. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I can't say we were super surprised by kind of what the feedback that we got, yeah. all the, the pointing, not surprising also at the same time. So let me ask Noel, you know, your experience, like, and this is something we talk about often um, for those of you that are listening, right? We have this partnership, Noel's white, I'm not, <laughs> you know, and there's always kind of this, like, you know, and I'll share Noel if you don't mind, um, you know, but this idea, <laughs> she doesn't even know what I'm going to share. I'll share if you um, don't mind. Yeah. But this idea that, right, like, she's white, does she does she really have, like, a, a leg to stand on, like, doing this work? And I'm like, yeah, you know, when you're an, an actual ally, yeah, you a thousand percent do, you know, you do this work, whether I'm in the room or not, you you do this work all the time, you do this work for your work, you do this work in your spare time with the podcast, you know, and this is, this is who you are, you live this, you eat this, you breathe this, you know, it's important to you. Um, but I think that's an interesting dynamic, being a, a white person, and uh, obviously different than my experience, but how do you navigate that, right? Because I feel like white people probably see you and they assume, you know, you've, I'm, we've talked about this in previous episodes. You hear things that other people maybe haven't. They think that you just kind of are on that side. Um, so how do you navigate conversations like this and, and spaces like that? Um, I mean, I would say luckily, probably for me, I was raised to have an opinion mm -hmm. yeah. and question things. So I think um, I sort of have that foundation just in my personality where like I'm not afraid of conflict and I, I hate to use the word conflict but a lot of times <clears throat> especially when it's white people kind of challenging what other white people are saying it does sometimes turn into a conflict I think it depends on the person right it depends on if what stage they're at um, in terms of their own whiteness on their own experiences kind of like what their own white <clears throat> identity is because you know i think that's another piece of it like what your experiences have been what you've been exposed to um i have no problem like calling people out for things and i you know i think obviously when you know people and you have a a comfort level with them you're able to have different levels of conversation <clears throat> you know even for us like i think um we have racial trust right so we're able to have those conversations um, but that's not always the case if, depending on the friendships that you have or the level of closeness you have with somebody. You can have an acquaintance who's um, a different color or culture than you, but do you really have that trust to be able to yeah. have those conversations? I think it's hardest probably to have it with family. Like, you know, to, it's almost easier, you know, with people that um, don't know sometimes because when it's personal, it, it can almost be more difficult. But I just think it's important to, like, keep – 
reiterating what I think is right. Mm -hmm. You know, what I deserve. Um, Yeah, I mean, when I was growing up, like the things I would hear were disturbing. Like, and you continue to hear it because white people think they could say it around other white people. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's our duty to really like just speak against that, you know, do do what I think is right, even if it can be uncomfortable at times. Um, You know, so I guess that's how I navigate it. Like just (laughs) speaking my mind and... I mean, I, if you don't agree, you don't agree. Like, like Harry was saying, you're never going to make everybody happy, right? So um, it's just something that, that I value, you know, ethically and morally. Um, and so I'm never going to let up. Like, I just yeah. I feel like I don't have a problem having those conversations. So a lot of it is getting past that comfort zone. Yeah. And um, I think it's easier to sort of ignore things um but yeah but look, where, look where that's got us you know right exactly. <laughs> i mean yeah we're now the country that all other countries are looking at right. like we are I'm like God. well and people pick and choose what they want to ignore right yeah, people pick and choose what um what they want to call attention to and i try to understand that from like we have the conversations about bias and you know i try to have the understanding of it, even in my family or among friends right people have their own thought processes because of their experiences or ways that bias form like I try to be I mean I'm a psychologist right we talk about that right like I try to have this kind of way of thinking about it but ultimately at the end of the day like we were saying today especially after what happened last week like sometimes there's a line that has to be drawn and it's you've got to be willing to stand up for what you believe in so yeah live in your truth for sure yeah well I think that kind of, I mean, we really just wanted to hop on here quickly, right? And just to talk a little bit about kind of what we've been dealing with. Um, I guess I'll share, you know, in my experience, um, slightly different than yours. Um, you know, I, so recently, so um, I kind of celebrated Kwanzaa, right? So I joined in some conversations um, each day. And one of the questions was, you know, are you living in your truth? Mm-hmm. And are, do you show up as the person that you think you are every day? Mm-hmm. Or the person that you say you are every day? And this work is really important to me, but I'd say uh, a year ago, right? Like we always had this debate, like, Miranda, you need to, you should be upset. You need to talk to people about these issues and you can't just walk away and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I can't deal with this. And like, I'm frustrated. I'm sick of this shit. And if, you, and if you're not on my side, if you're not with me, you're against me, right? That was always right. kind of my, my thought process, you know? Um, and then you hear folks that are like, you know, love con- conquers all. And there's somewhere in between there that's kind of this sweet spot that, doesn't make you necessarily feel like you're giving up on your values and what you stand for. Um, but this, I, but then there's this idea of meeting in the middle. And like you said, right now we're at a place where there's this, there's this divide mm-hmm. and, you know, are people just, um, what is the term I just talked about? Op- optical allies, you know, are they mm-hmm. just doing the work when it serves them? And then when you leave a room, are they in agreement mm-hmm. with other people, you know, or are they true allies? Um, and, and then how do I show up every day? And I think, starting this podcast, I'm like, well, th- I am about this work, but now I have to be about this work, right? Mm-hmm. And so having these hard conversations and, and really doing the research, figuring out how do you have these conversations? I've stumbled over my words many times, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, yeah. Well, it's a lesson. like, I'm like, uh, like, I'm still like, what, am I saying the wrong thing? Can I, I mean, you know, that's like, yeah, it's, a, it's but this is like such a hot, a political hot button topic. Mm-hmm. We get scared. That's, I think, why we get nervous a lot of times to come on, right? Because it's like, yeah, you get nervous to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. Do we want to hop off? Do you want to take any questions? I know a lot of people, we are getting some folks that are joining a little late. We're happy you're here, but I feel like we're almost done with our conversation. So I guess we'll kind of wrap it up. And then if anything comes up, then we can c- continue to talk about it. For those of you that showed up a little bit late, Um, Really, just to recap, we were talking about, you know, the book drive. Again, you can click the link in our bio, check out those titles. Um, Basically, Noel and I have been hearing a lot of um, things, just discomfort around the titles, um, mainly all from white people. Um, And not to say that there aren't folks that have supported the drive that are white. But when we talk about racism in the form of fear, um, just reading titles like, and again, I'll show you, you know, anti-racist baby, right? When you when you see a title like, no, my first book of protest, um, people feel uncomfortable, even without looking um, between the covers, right? And so this work that we're doing, whether it's with children or with adults, 
um, getting people to look between the covers and really see what's inside. So that applies to whether it's literature or just actual people. Um, so just wanted to hop on and talk about you know some of the things that we've been hearing, how we've been dealing with it, really just hear how you've been dealing with it as well. Um, we have Ashley Wright Miranda, the action. It is hard for me to see y'all. I'm getting old, I'm blind. Can you read that? <laughs> The action aspect of this is so important. Equity justice is not just a conversation. You, <clears throat> if you only talk about it, it is performative and does little to change the issues at hand. Yeah, we were talking about performative allyship um, before we popped on here. I think it's like similar to the optical. Yeah, exactly. Um, allyship, yeah. Um, but yeah, just sort of doing it for attention or doing it because you think it looks good mm -hmm. and the behind closed doors or really when, it, when you're called to the carpet, what are you actually really doing? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I think that that's um, a good note to end on unless anybody else has some questions, but we, we plan to hop on like more. So thank you. We got 15 whole people more uh -huh. than we expected. <laughs> and I were like, maybe six. I don't know. You said um, three before we did. I? Look, okay. Low standards. If you start with low standards, you can only go up from there. That <laughs> is really what I, really what I lead with. Okay. Um, but no, thank you all so much for joining us. We totally appreciate it. Um, we'll be doing lives more as we kind of figure out what season two is going to look like for us. Um, season two will probably drop mid February is what we're hoping. I'm dealing with a couple of um, business changes. <laughs> so uh, just working kind of some of that stuff out. So make sure you guys let us know anything else you'd like to hear about or for us to talk about. We really love getting feedback from folks. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate all <laughs> more lives. Shout outs to the projects. <laughs> Um, we really do appreciate it, you all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for all the likes. Thank you for the support. Um, anything else, Noel? No, I think it's okay. good. I'm happy to see everybody on here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, do wait. The What's our exit, Noel? <laughs> wait, what is it? How does our exit? We don't even know what the end of our podcast is like. Oh, right, you peace. Mean you say peace. I say bye. Peace. <laughs> all right. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>